guess what we're doing with that. Moser. The boys. Good boys. Today I'm making pizza dough. And I'm going to be making a double recipe, but I'll be giving the measurements for the single recipe. Uh, what we need, are going to start with is we need a cup of beer. And you can use any kind of beer that you like. We're using Harpoon IPA. And you want it at the very least room temperature. I ran it through the microwave for about one minute and just to get the chill off. And to that we're going to add a tablespoon of yeast. You want good bread yeast. We're going to add a couple tablespoons of olive oil, a teaspoon of salt, and a tablespoon of sugar. And we'll mix that together and then we'll add in some uh, bread flour. So I'm going to let that sit for just a minute to get the yeast dissolving and get the rest of my ingredients together. I'm also adding an egg. The recipe doesn't call for it. I like the way it um, adds to the texture and it really helps that to rise a little better and it adds just a little bit better flavor. The recipe also doesn't call for any spices, but I like spices in our dough. So I'm going to add a little bit of garlic powder, probably a half teaspoon of garlic powder and parsley, oregano, and a little basil. We're going to add two and three fourths a cup of regular flour and we'll probably wind up adding a little bit more because we put the egg in so but we'll mix this up there's the two we'll mix it up and then we'll see how much more flour we need it may need up to a half a cup more but usually it's just a couple of tablespoons I love using my KitchenAid to knead the dough. Makes things so much easier. It's going to take a couple of minutes to mix up. Now down in there, I don't know how well you can see, it's still a pretty wet dough. So we're going to add, that's pretty wet, so I'm going to start by adding another quarter cup and letting it mix and then we'll see how much more we need. It is a double batch, so. Yep. Okay, so you want to mix it up, and you're going to add flour or water if it's dry. Um, just a little bit at a time so you get it to the consistency where you want. And what you want is you just want it a little tacky, kind of like the back of a post-it note. But when you touch it, you shouldn't come off with dough sticking to your hand. If you come off with dough sticking, it's too wet and you'll need to add just a tiny bit more flour. Or if it's too dry, you can add a little bit of water at a time and just keep mixing it. So this is ready. I'm going to put it in a greased bowl, let it rise uh, till doubled probably take about 45 minutes and then we'll go from there so you put it in a grease bowl and then you're going to flip it over and I'm going to cover it with some plastic wrap to keep it from sticking and then just put a towel over it set it someplace warm and let it rise till doubled as I said probably 45 minutes to an hour um, if it's a really chilly day it may take a little longer doubled what we're going to do is we're going to punch it down and knead all the air bubbles out of it. And then what you can do from there is uh, put it on your pizza pan or whatever you're baking on, spread it out, and go ahead and make your pizza as you normally do. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to divide this in half and we're going to freeze it because we're not making pizza today. So you don't need to do anything. You can just put it in a bag and freeze it. Uh, when you're ready, pull it out. Usually I pull it out the night before, 
let it defrost in the fridge and it'll be ready to go the next day you just spread it out um, you can make a thin or a thick crust whichever you like if you want you just once it's spread out you let it rise a little bit and then you just make your pizza as normal but we're gonna need some air bubbles out here I'm just dividing it in half. I'll finish kneading the air bubbles out of it. You can throw it on a board and knead it regular, but this works just as well. I'm just going to throw it in a baggie and put it in the freezer because it's only going to be there a couple of days. And this is a double batch. Yep. So you get two good sized pizzas. They'll go into a, I don't know, I think it's a 14 inch pizza pan that they are. So this will fill that pan. Okay, so we're getting ready to make pizza. This is the baking stone. Um, the directions for this stone are a little different from what I've he you heard about before. It says to uh, spray it with some uh, the non-stick baking spray and then you sprinkle it with cornmeal and then you're going to make your pizza right on it. Um, most of the stones I've seen before say to preheat them and this one said doesn't so. We will try it this way the first time, and if we don't like it next time, we'll, yep. That's always what I've heard, is you make it on the peel and then slip it onto the preheated stone. But we'll try it. So, you know, we'll just spread the dough on it. So this is the pre-frozen dough. I pulled it out of the freezer last night, let it thaw overnight in the fridge. Um, you probably want to spray your freezer bags that you're freezing in. I forgot to, and actually it came out quite nicely, but it would probably make things easier. So we're going to just spread the dough out on the stone. Almost there. Normally I pre-bake my crust for a little bit, for like seven or eight minutes before we put the toppings on, but first time using the stone, we're gonna, not going to use the, do the pre-bake, we'll see how it turns out and we'll adjust for that the next time if we need to. There may be a part two. So we're ready to add the sauce. And then we'll add whatever toppings you want. Sausage. Cooking up in there. Hot sausage. Hot sausage. A little bit more. That's better. A little bit more of the homemade sauce on it. Uh, yep. So we like a little mozzarella cheese on there to start with and then we uh, will add the other toppings and then put more cheese on and the pepperoni goes on last. So the sausage is all cooked up. We got it broken down. Um, I had some cooked burger in the freezer. We're just thawing that out and we'll add the, mix them together and add the two to the top of the pizza. There's the hot sausage and the burger. We're going to put some mozzarella on top and then we'll put the pepperoni on and then a little bit of Parmesan cheese over the top. Makes the pepperoni nice and crispy. Yep, adds flavors. Well, that's the mozzarella that I've thrown everywhere all over the counter. So. Um, we'll put the pepperoni on. We like a little bit of pepperoni. And some powdered cheese over the top. Parmesan Romano. We like a little cheese too. Going in the oven. It's not done. I would say we'll give it another 
I think seven minutes and then we'll check it again. So let's see if we can. That looks good. It took um, between 27 and 30 minutes. So it would be the paste on your oven. We'll let it sit a couple minutes and it's dinner. You know, you need one of those uh, rockers. Yep. Yep. I thought about it. We need a new pizza wheel. Uh, we need a good pizza wheel. Yeah. Well, no, we need a rocker. We'll give it a try. Oh, yeah. Still a little soft in the center, but it's good.